Hey there, Ramon Osu with you here, and in this video, we're gonna help the killer kangaroo out here with his forehand. He's been spraying balls left and right, and if you need help fixing your forehand, we're gonna do it in five minutes or less. Let's get started. Now, if you're new to my channel, I made a video a while back called How to Fix Your Toss Forever in Five Minutes or Less. I think I'm gonna do a little series here, so subscribe if that sounds good to you. But the thing with the forehand is, by nature, it's dependent on what your opponent is doing, unlike the toss, which you can control. Incidentally, I'll link to that video down below if you wanna check it out. However, what you're gonna learn in this video are the key fundamentals that you're gonna execute on every technically sound forehand with things that you're gonna to adapt to certain situations, like if you're hitting a high ball, if you're hitting a low ball, if you're hitting top spin, or if you're hitting with slice, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna be demonstrating on the trusty eye coach here. You can either do this with shadow swings and visualization, or on a drop feed, or if you just wanna bite the bullet and get probably the best tool you'll ever invest in, I'll put a link and a discount code down below. So with that, let's get started. The first thing you wanna do on every forehand is you wanna line up your hips to the 45 degree angle to the court and get your contact at the 45 degree angle to the court. So I'm gonna show this from a couple different angles, but essentially what I got here is I'm on a 45 degree angle to this ball with my racket right on the sweet spot, arm going right at a 45 degree angle to the, to the ball. Okay, this is how I wanna line up for every single forehand. Now, yes, you can hit an open stance forehand, you can hit a closed stance forehand, but from a power perspective, you're gonna get the most bang with the least buck, so to speak, with our hips on this kind of semi-open stance um, with our, again, with our arm on the 45 degree angle at contact. Okay, so we got that. Now the second thing we wanna do is we wanna create our coil and we wanna find what Rick Macy called the pet the dog position. Okay, and I'll show you this from a couple different angles. You can see my arm going out behind me at about a 45 degree angle to the court. I've got my left hand stretched out here, creating some tension in my side. And I've got my hand, my hitting hand, on the same side as my body. Okay, now what I wanna do is as I start the swing, I wanna feel the initiation coming off my back foot to open the hip, which is gonna create lag. Okay, it's gonna create this flip. That's what you hear about all the time in these modern forehands. So as I rotate, my hand lags behind, the racket flips, and then we pull through to contact. Okay, as I'm going through contact, what you do with the finish, kind of up to you based on the type of shot that you're hitting. I like to have the old Landstorm finish where we really focus on the extension of the racket out into the court. Okay, it's called the Landstorm finish. Pete Sampras's coach, Maria Sharapova, was a stickler for that. All right, it's really good for getting penetration into the court. So again, we've got the pet the dog position, left hand is stretched across the body, hit creating this nice coil, weights on the back foot, and as we swing, we open the hips, racket lags behind, and we go through the ball out to contact. Now again, this is a foundational thing, right? If we wanna to add top spin, all we wanna do is make sure that the racket face is coming from low to high as we approach the ball, the more low to high we go as we approach contact, the more spin we're going to have. And the more horizontal the finish is, or the more horizontal the swing path is, I should say, the more of a, a flat shot that you're going to hit. So I hope that's making sense so far. The third step we want to do is we want to start from a take back position. Okay, so now a good take back position, we're going to create a nice coil by keeping our left hand on the racket. Okay, racket tip is up. You'll see some guys with this kind of thing, like Kyrgios was actually creating even more torque and more lag. I think that's a little bit extreme. I don't think you need to do it that way. You wanna keep the racket tip going straight up. Now we come straight down with our hand so that our we're back in the pet the dog position. Racket going out behind us at a 45 degree angle. Palm is down. You can also have the palm open this way, but you're gonna get more lag and snap kind of this way. And now we go through the swing and we finish. Okay, so again, we start in our take back position. We got a nice tight coil along the um, opposite side of our body here. Okay, racket tip is up. We drop it down into the slot. And we swing through and we finish out to contact like that. So this sort of goes without saying, right? You're gonna go through this process 
every day and do this for about five minutes a day. You can do this with shadow swings or with your eye coach here and you're going to train these movements to be part of your forehand ground stroke and it's going to lead to a lot of success. All right, the next thing we want to do, we've started from the take back. We know where the pet the dog position is. So now we're in a ready position. We don't technically know if the ball's coming to our forehand, but we do. Okay, so now the ball's coming to our forehand. The first thing we're gonna do after we come out of our split step is we're gonna start to create this unit turn. And if you watch really carefully, here's a little bonus tip. You're gonna start with the hips and your hands are gonna trail behind. And what that does is it creates a little bit of extra tension in your body that we're gonna release into the ball. Okay, so the hips start to turn, the hands lag behind as we get our feet into position. We're in our take back position now, and now you're home free. We're gonna get into the pet the dog position and swing out to contact. Okay, watch it again. Starting with our split step, turning with our hands, I'm sorry, with our hips first, hands trail behind, we're in our take back position down to pet the dog and swing through to contact. And we're zipping right along. How are you liking this, by the way? Do you like this kind of five minute quick fix approach? Maybe I'll do it for the backhand, I'll do it for the volley. Just put your comments down below if you'd like to see that. All right, so moving on, now we're into rhythms, okay? So much of your forehand is based on rhythm and that's where the trusty eye coach really comes in handy. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do all of the things that we just practiced but we're gonna practice it in time, okay? So as you can see, starting in a ready position, turning in, one. Now we're gonna go in right away. We're gonna hit on three. Focusing on all of those major fundamentals as the racket goes right into the ball, making contact right on that 45 degree angle into the court. And there you go, okay? So you start to get into a rhythm. Now the rhythm is gonna change based on the ball that you're receiving. And that's the difference we made um, in the beginning about the ball toss and a serve, which is totally you, and this ball, which is based on what your opponent is doing. But we wanna be able to develop that rhythm, okay, and have a feeling of that in our body. And I almost forgot the most important thing and the greatest part about the eye coach is that we're gonna focus while we're doing this on keeping our head still through contact as we rotate through the ball. Okay, you notice that again. As I start my swing, my head is staying still on contact and my body rotates around. So it's kind of this type of motion. Head stays still through contact, just like Federer. And now let's get into the last, the sixth and final step to uh, mastering your forehand in uh, five minutes or less, which actually has gone over a little bit, but it, I'm demonstrating, so it'll take a little more time. But you should be able to do this sequence in about five minutes every day. Okay, the last step is footwork. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now, the footwork is a little arbitrary here. It's gonna be based on what ball that you're receiving. But I'm gonna hit the ball. I'm gonna move a couple of steps. I'm gonna get back into position. And I'm gonna hit the ball again. Okay, so it looks like this. Do a little split step. Hit the ball a couple feet. Boom, a couple feet out. Boom, a couple feet out again. Take a little bit further if you'd like. And you're just making sure that as you get into position, your back foot is weighted. You've got a nice coil going around the ball and you'll be a star by Tuesday. And there you have it, nothing to it. Kangaroo's feeling good. I hope it helped your forehand as well. Thanks so much for watching this video. I had a great time making it for you. If you're looking for Roger Federer's forehand secrets and the reason it's probably the best shot of all time, head over to my website at osatennis360.com download it for free. Also links to all the videos that I talked about and all of my favorite tools are down below. Thanks again for watching. Hit the old like button. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in future videos. And if you'd like to see the backhand version of this video as well, subscribe and uh, share this with someone who you know needs help with the old forehand. All right, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. I yeah, told you you could do it, buddy.